Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you have a good time with your family and friends. In today's session on Azure, I'm here to give you a quick overview of uh, some of the changes that uh, Microsoft has made when it comes to deploying your infra within the platform. So in order to explain that quickly, let me just flip over to create VM button. And uh, I've already filled some of the basic information. So the first change that I see under the basics tab is that uh, there is an option of uh, what you call spot instance, right? You see that Azure spot instance. Before that, that option was not there. So in order to explain this, let me just flip over to the whiteboard and let's take, this is a Azure data center. Right, so as we know that uh, Microsoft has multiple regions, they have uh, multiple data centers within those regions, and they've already invested billions of dollars. So what happens is that, I'm just taking an example of one Azure data center. And in that, uh, they have uh, multiple servers which are already deployed. It's not that uh, once I initiate uh, creating or deploying the machine, they start uh, putting that infra. Those infrastructure is already deployed and it's already filled within the data center. So what spot instance is basically, they want to make sure that they're able to utilize those machines which are not being utilized as of right now at a discounted rate. So as a user, you can come over here, pick a spot instance, and the price will be considerably lower what you pay normally in pay as you go. That is what spot instance is that, so that Microsoft can leverage whatever they have invested within that data center. And if that machine is not being utilized, so rather than just sitting idle over there, they are incentivized that uh, for you that you can utilize that. Uh, at a discounted rate. But trade-off of that one is that uh, that can be taken away any time. So say, for example, there is a customer which comes and say, I want to, this is a customer one. He comes, I want to deploy this spot instance, right? And he can utilize the uh, discounted rate. But there is a customer two want to deploy this in a production environment. Right, so customer two will have a priority over customer one because customer one is using spot instance. Customer two is using this for production environment and that is actually one more differences. Spot instances can be used for test and dev kind of environment. So that's one use case scenario for test and dev. Another use case scenario is that for batch processes. Right, as we know that in batch uh, processes are deployed or can be divided in multiple nodes. And if you can wait for the machines to be provisioned uh, and you're okay with that time to be taken, right, you can deploy that uh, spot instance and you can divide that within multiple, uh, multiple uh, nodes. That's another case scenario. So that is what spot instances is in nutshell. Basically it is used for uh, test and dev kind of environment and even for batch deployment. It is not recommended for uh, production workloads because that can be taken away when there's a request coming from uh, from a customer uh, B in this case or customer two who wants to deploy this and they will get a priority. So that is one option which is new within the Azure deployment. Let's move on. And uh, I'll straight away go to the advanced tab. And if you scroll down, you can see that there's some new option. First option is host group. Right now, I don't have any host group in place, but let me just open another tab and just type host group. And if I open this and click on add, it will ask me to create a host group. I can deploy this in availability zone in different fall domain and update domain. So what is host group? So let's take one more example. Let 
we are talking about host group. So basically, host group is you will have a dedicated bare metal machine which will be deployed for you. Right, so this is a dedicated machine. Generally, what happens is that in Azure Data Center, if there are five customers, uh, they might be running those five infra maybe on the same machine and you won't even uh, 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 or will be aware of that. That's a common practice when it comes to Azure or any uh, public cloud uh, uh, deployment. But with host group, you will have a dedicated machine for yourself. So you have a dedicated machine in which only your machines will be deployed. So one advantage of this is that you get a better performance. You have from security perspective also, uh, it is good because sometimes you don't want to share the data with some other company. So you will have a dedicated machine. And uh, because a dedicated machine is deployed for you, you'll be paying for the entire host. doesn't matter how many machines are running because that is dedicated for you, that is segregated for you. So you'll be paying for the entire host. And if you go to the pricing calculator, there are different uh, host groups. So there's a type one, I think there's a type two and it has specific compute, RAM storage and that many machines you will be able to deploy. But that is what host group is. So if you want something, a dedicated bare metal resource for yourself, you can utilize and uh, host group is the answer for that, right? So that's one more new thing that is there. Let me go to the portal one more time and let's go to the proximity placement group. So that's another new thing. So if you can see, I don't have any of them right now, but if you go and type in proximity placement group, I can go and create one. I can fill up the information. So what is proximity placement group? So proximity placement group is, so say take example of uh, this uh, data center. So what happens once I deploy the machines within the data center, if I deploy this first machine, it can be in one corner of the data center. The second machine can be on the other corner of the data center. If your application requires the lead lat latency, there is a problem right because it has to travel all the way from this place to uh, this place even though it is in one of the same data center these data centers are huge uh, so you'll expect there's going to be a latency a placement group will make sure that physically these machines are closer to each other Output placement group so latency wise, it has the least latency. Inter VM connectivity is better. And you get better performance. Right, so that is what proximity is group. Basically it is just uh, an option now with an Azure deployment that uh, your machines will be deployed closer to each other so you get better performance. What else? I think there is one more thing which I missed. Let me go back. Okay, one more thing. Yes, the VM generation. So as you can see, previously it was only Gen 1. Now you also get the option of Gen 2. Now Gen 1 and Gen 2 machines are being utilized on-prem for a long time, right? Gen 2 has been there for uh, for quite a while. So some of the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 is that uh, and just to point over here, not all the functionalities which are there on Generation 2 machines uh, on-prem, uh, they're still not. But some of the some of the plus points that you get by deploying the Gen 2 machine within Azure, which was not there before, because in Gen 1, you can only have an operating system up to I think two terabyte was the limitation. Now that limitation is taken away. With Gen 2, you can also have a operating system. Uh, the size of the disk can be more than two terabytes. So that's one advantage of that. Some of the other things which only you, uh, you know that on-prem that you can do 
is you can like you can use the shielded VM, right? Like those functionalities are not still there on uh, on the Azure uh, on the Azure site. That's number one thing that come, came to my mind. Another thing is that uh, encryption of your disk on Azure when it comes to Gen 2 is still not supported. Maybe that will come in, in, in future, but right now that is not. But uh, important thing, this is another new feature which has been added. So you can still deploy Gen 2. I think it's only specific to certain machines, uh, but uh, that is also a new option. So these are some of the new uh, changes that uh, Microsoft has made when it comes to deploying your infra within the Azure environment. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.